Welcome to the Sanity Project Podcast, where you can awaken your mind to clarity and success even in today's life challenges. We're here to provide insights and solutions that will help you live a sane, healthy, and prosperous life. Here is your host, Joanne Victoria. Hello, everybody. This is Joanne Victoria with the Sanity Project Podcast. You are here to discover a life of clarity, confidence, sanity, and entrepreneurial success. And we have a great guest for you today. Our guest today is Brendan Kumarasamy. How's that? Literally perfect, Joanne. Okay, good. (laughs) I hate when I screw it up. And what Brendan talks about is being a great speaker. He is the founder of Master Talk and coaches ambitious executives and entrepreneurs to become top 1% communicators in their industry. He also has a popular YouTube channel called Master Talk with the goal of providing free access to communication tools for everyone in the world. Welcome to the show, Brenton. The pleasure and the honor is absolutely mine, Joanne. Thanks for having me. Thank you. I appreciate you being here because this is important because I watched the video on your YouTube channel today, the one about uh, group coaching. uh, I don't know if that's the exact title, but where there's more than one coach uh, speaking. And it was like, I've, I've been a part of that myself, you know, where people start talking and then nobody's paying attention because people are checking their phones, checking their watches, checking their feet, whatever they're checking. They're not focused on where they're at and how that can be debilitating not only to the audience because they won't trust anybody, but also to the uh, speaker. Absolutely. Yeah, group presentations are a really important piece of of how we convey and communicate ideas as a team rather than just as an individual. Very well said. So along those lines, how can you help speakers overcome their own biases, their own losses, their own... uh, I hate to use the word stupidity, but I'm going to use it. Stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> well, it comes down to that. You know, when the, you do things and you go, why did you do that stupid thing? And that's also in retrospect. But how do you help people be better than they should be? Absolutely, Joy. I mean, we've all been there. But I would say for me, to keep things simple, communication is like juggling 18 balls at the same time. So one of those balls is eye contact. One of them is facial expressions. One of those smiling, storytelling, body language. And it can get really overwhelming really quickly. So for me, the question has always been, what are the three easiest balls to juggle? Because if we focus on the first ball or the second ball, the third ball, it's going to be easier for us to avoid a lot of common mistakes, but also improve our communication in a way that we actually see tangible progress. Similar to, let's say, if we want to lose weight, if we lose five pounds in the first week or three pounds in the first week, that gives us momentum to say, I can do this. Let me keep working on it. So for me, the first ball is the random word exercise. Pick a word like cup, like tissue box, and create a random presentation out of thin air to end. And this serves two main purposes. The first one is it helps us deal with uncertainty because life is filled with it. When we meet somebody new at an event, we have no idea that conversation is going to go. And the second piece is if you can make sense out of nonsense, you could make sense out of anything. So I challenge your audience to do the random word exercise a few times a day and they'll get much better at communicating ideas off the cusp. And what are your other two? Absolutely. So my, my second one is the question drill. So we get asked questions all the time in our life, Joanne, at school, at work, in our homes, on a podcast, but most of us are reactive to those questions. We're not proactive to them. I'll give you an example of what I mean. A few years ago, when I started guesting on podcasts, Joanne, I sucked. I remember some guy asked me, hey, Bernie, where does the fear of communication come from? And I looked at him and I said, uh, I don't know, dude, London, Los Angeles, <laughs> New York City, <laughs> Right? You tell me. I had no clue to answer the question. So how did I fix this, Joanne? Every single day, for five minutes, 
I just answered one question that I thought the world would ask me about my expertise. So day one was, how do I overcome my fear of communication? Day two was, how do I practice this every day? Day three was, tips for introverts, et cetera, et cetera. But if you did that for a year, you'll have answered 365 questions about your expertise. You'll be bulletproof. And finally, number three it's so simple. Nobody does it, Joanne. Just make a list of three to five people you love the most in your life. A brother, a sister, a colleague, a client, a podcaster. And just send them a video message for 20 seconds to just say, hey, I'm really thinking about you. Really love everything you're creating in the world. And I hope you're having a beautiful day. And if you did that a few times a day, you'll make your communication better and you'll also make other people's lives better. That's sweet. I like that. I like that part. There you go. I mean, seriously, because it's certainly no skin off anybody's nose to do that. It costs nothing. It's absolutely free. And it's it's a good one. It's a good one. It's a keeper. So like- how did you get into this master talk situation? <laughs> For sure. It sounds like a disease. I know. <laughs> Yeah, and it definitely was a situation in retrospect, Joanne. I mean, I'm I'm the the quintessential accidental entrepreneur. I never wanted to be a business owner. In fact, I was allergic to it. When I went to business school, I literally studied the opposite of what you would think a communication professional would study, which is accounting, because I saw it as a safety net. And I graduated in that degree, by the way. So I was really looking to work at an accounting firm and just do my numbers in peace. But what happened was in my journey, Joanne, I did these things called case competitions. Think of it like professional sports, but for nerds. So while other guys my age are playing baseball or rugby or soccer or football, I wasn't one of those guys. I was doing presentations competitively, and that's how I learned how to speak. But then as I got older, I started coaching the other students around me on how to communicate ideas effectively. Because I felt that, wait a second, if I could teach them, they could be better at winning these competitions. And I accidentally developed a gift on how to help other people speak better. So the idea for the YouTube channel Master Talk really came from a whim of coaching a bunch of people for free and me realizing that, wait a second, everything I'm teaching them isn't really available for free for the rest of the world. So that's when the idea for Master Talk started and then a few years later it turned to something I never could have imagined. Yeah, I see you have a tremendous number of people who have subscribed to your uh, talks. I mean, it's amazing. So when you say you uh, every two weeks you do a, we I think we said this off camera, off off mic, uh, you do a free workshop. How does that work? Is that yeah, on the master talk? Yeah, for sure, Joanne. So, so the workshop that I run every two weeks, and people could go to rockstarcommunicator.com to sign up for that, is just a Zoom call that I, I facilitate every two weeks. It's a 90-minute call, and it's free. So there could be eight-year-old kids on that call I've seen. I've seen CEOs of massive companies jump on that call. Everybody's invited to the party. And I think the big difference between the YouTube channel and the training, I encourage people to do both, but the YouTube channel is more static. So you'll see a bunch of videos that you can just watch answering different questions you might have about speaking. But on the training, you actually see me live facilitating as I'm interacting, coaching people for free. And during that session, you're seeing me apply those tips and give that workshop so you can learn a different level in, in the process. So that's, that's what I encourage people to do for the both. That sounds amazing. You're giving, you're giving, a, you're giving your work away, but obviously many of them call you up and say, I got to hire you right now. <laughs> yeah, you could say that. That that's what happened later, Joanne. Absolutely. When it's I started Master Talk on a whim. I was literally in my mother's basement making videos for free. But then and the reason isn't because I'm some philanthropist or anything. It's because IBM was paying me a lot of money. Like I was doing well financially. I never thought Master Talk would be a business. It's just nine months into it, to your point. A lot of executives reached out. My business partner is 20 years older than me, who has a lot more wisdom and maturity than I do. He's the one who really pointed me into the direction of saying, hey, by the way, Brendan, managers, directors, vice presidents, which is a very small group of of your community, Brendan, but those people pay thousands of dollars to work with you because if if you help their communication, they'll just get a promotion. The company pays for it. They don't even have to pay for it. And I was like, oh, that's true. (laughs) And that's what happened. Wow. So you've been blessed here. 
Absolutely. I, I mean, you know, we always we always like to say that whenever we're successful, the bigger the dream, the better the team, and and the people around me are, are truly exceptional. Whether it's to my family, you know, my mom, my sister take care of me, who allowed me to run the business full time without any other pain. My my business partner is really smart, who kind of helped me, guide me, took a chance on me. To the clients, really trusted me. The early in my career when I didn't have any clients, yeah, and and to the podcast hosts, I remember. Three years ago, I didn't really. When I started doing this, I didn't understand why people even wanted to interview me. I was like, the, everyone took a chance on me, so that I could become the person I am today. So yeah, I'll always be grateful. That's amazing. And to say you're blessed is the is the small part of what you're doing. Um, what else do I need to know about you? Yeah, great question. What else do you need to know about me? I would I would end with this question, Joanne, that I'd encourage your audience to think about. And the question is, how would your life change if you were an exceptional communicator? You know, the challenge I see with this industry at large is it's so focused on fear. Oh, the you know, you can't speak in front of a classroom. You can't speak in the boardroom. Oh, you're going to make this big mistake in your presentation. And it's always fear, fear, fear. Whereas for me, it's more of an opportunity that we can all wake ourselves up to. Because communication, in my view, is an accelerant of dreams. It doesn't matter what you want in your life. Communication helps you accelerate that dream, whether it's to be a better parent for our children, whether it's to be a better podcast host, whether it's to a, be a better executive or a business or a business owner. It's every moment of our life. And when we focus on that, we realize that communication isn't just for people who want to speak on a big stage, but it's really for all of us so that we could show up better for other people so i would encourage people to reflect on that question and what are your hopes and dreams brendan yeah beautiful question joanne my hopes and dreams i'll I'll tell you the my hopes through a story and the story is about taylor swift you know she wins an award in 2014 called women of the year by by music company billboard and she's standing up on that stage and she says your future woman of the year has big dreams to be a singer. She's learning how to play piano. She's in choir right now and she's 12 years old. And we need to take care of her. And then seven years go by in that same video and Billie Eilish becomes the youngest inductee in Billboard's history to win Women of the Year. And she's 17 years old. She gets up on that stage. She's got her big bulky jacket. She looks at the crowd, Joanne. She says, yeah, yeah, I'm so excited to be here. So she just rambles throughout the whole speech. And then the last 30 seconds completely solidifies and changes the course of how I decided to live my life. And she ends her talk by saying, you know, I was 12 years old and I was watching Taylor Swift's speech in 2014. And I was learning how to sing and I was in choir and I became the person I am today because of that speech. So thank you everybody in this room for taking care of me. And when she walked off that stage, my first thought immediately was, what about the next Oprah Winfrey, the next Elon Musk, the next change maker of our society? That person might be a seven, eight-year-old girl in the middle of nowhere. And I know for sure she probably can't afford a communication coach. So for me, my mission has always been, and it will always be, how do I become this generation's Dale Carnegie and democratize the world's information of communication in a way that Dale Carnegie couldn't when he was alive because podcasting, being on a YouTube channel – Creating videos around speaking wasn't really a thing. It wasn't possible. It wasn't feasible. Whereas I get an opportunity now to make every human being on earth to be an exceptional communicator. And that's what drives me every day. That's pretty good, Brendan. I've practiced it a lot. So hopefully hopefully, hopefully it came out well this time. (laughs) It did. It came out perfect. It was professional. It was poignant. And it was on point as well. That's very good. All right. So. What else, you know, in order for people to even want to listen to your Master Talk uh, videos, what do they need to know more about you? I mean, what what am I trying to say? Take your time. You think I'm done? No, I said take your time. <laughs> oh, really? Is that what you said? Take my yes. time. Yes. No, <laughs> I... T- I think that there's something about you because you very um you're wide open except you're secretive. Part of you is secretive. <laughs> did, did I hit a spot? Um so what do you want people to know about you that you haven't said? Mm, honestly, uh today what I haven't said. Sure. Hmm. 
I mean, I mean, at this point, I've been on so many podcasts. Pretty, pretty much, pretty much everybody knows what my whole life is about these days, John. But I would say the one thing is that I would really challenge people to think about as well. And I think that's part of the reason why I've gained a lot of clarity in my life at such a young age is because of the quality of the questions I've asked myself about life. You know, Viktor Frankl, he has a great quote on this. He says that you should live life as if you got a second chance at it. Like as if you made every single mistake, uh, you know, I'm just listing a couple of funny ones. Like, you know, this person divorces you, takes half of your money, your children hate you, you, may, you spent your whole life doing a career you didn't enjoy, you're in really bad health, you made every mistake, and then some spirit, some energy gives you a second shot at life. And the way that I, that I think of my life is how do I make sure that I don't need that second chance? So for me, a lot of a lot of my process, a lot of my inner work to get to Master Talk as an idea and as a mission and as a calling really went back down to, okay, what's the big enemy here? Because the enemy isn't the guy who's cutting me off in traffic. It isn't the person yelling at me on the phone. It isn't the person who doesn't get the food right when I ask for a burger or something. <laughs> the enemy is time. And it's ticking on all of us. Mm -hmm. So for us, the question is now going, how do I figure out that clarity? And I'll give one example of this. I call them 80-20 questions. We all know the 80-20 principle, right? What, what are 20% of the actions that drive 80% of the results? My version of that, Joanne, is what are 20% of the questions that we can ask ourselves to gain 80% of the clarity? So one example of that is my, my focus question, which is if you could only accomplish three things in your life, and only three things, nothing else, what would you want to accomplish and why? And I would say the, the culmination of everything I've learned so far is I've just asked myself thousands of these questions, so I have the wisdom of someone who's already died multiple times over. I think that's, that's one thought that comes to mind. <laughs> yeah, but that's true. I mean, based on what you're saying, that's correct. Right. So, okay, so I'm impressed, um, and that's a big deal because I have interviewed loads of people, and I'll half of it. them are okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know why they're okay? It's because you're not asking the, the guests you like for guest recommendation. That's my, maybe why they're <laughs> you're getting a lot of bad inflow. <laughs> Aha. Uh Aha, -huh. uh -huh, there you go. There I go. And uh, I, I just think you're you're better than okay because as you say you have spent a great deal of time asking yourself these same questions that you tell other people to ask themselves and you do it every day and most people don't do that but once a year if that much i don't even think they do it once in their life joanne yeah there I is think, that yeah i think most of us we hide from from our potential we hide from what we're capable of and and a lot of that is for good reason right like when i was younger all i could focus on was retiring my mom and just making some money i wasn't somebody who's was trying to change the world or any of that sure. not, right i just i just wanted to get a job in accounting make six figures be the first person to get a university degree and take care of the people around me but as i as i make those decisions and as we get a little bit more money a little bit more healthier then to your point our our possibilities start to expand but when that expansion happens, people don't decide to expand with that possibility. They just stay where they are. And I just chose not to. I think that's the, I think that's the big takeaway, right? Is that I don't think I'm that special. I don't think I'm that great. I, I just think the difference is that I chose to solve my own Rubik's Cube, whereas everyone else chooses not to kind of tinker with it and trying to figure out their life. That's all true, but you did it. And other people aren't doing it. And that's the key. I agree. And I'm still working on it, right? I mean, I still haven't figured out my love life. I still haven't figured out how I'm going to scale this business. And, and I still haven't figured out what do I do after Master Talk? Like, what if I lost my voice someday? What would my purpose be? What would my identity be? So there's still a lot of unanswered questions. But I think the big one, to your point, is the people who gain the clarity are the people who are always willing to f try to find the answer. Well, you'll always have a voice one way or another. You will always have a voice. So that's something that you can rely on. And Master Talk should just keep going on. Um, I d didn't see how many videos there were, but there seemed to be n a huge number of them. Yeah, there's definitely a lot now. But a lot more knowledge to go. I mean, I, I probably have... 
I mean, I, I'm definitely one of the youngest in the industry right now, Jordan, because I'm only 26, right? So I have I have another 40, 50, 60 years of, of knowledge to learn. So it would be it would be really disappointing if if I had to leave Earth early, because I'm sure there's a lot more to uncover and a lot more things to learn from from everyone okay. around me. And you will do it. Well, I thank you for being here today. For those of people who want to find you, they can go to your uh, YouTube channel, Master Talks, and they can go to your LinkedIn cha- Absolutely. channel. Absolutely. You know, Brendan Kumarasamy, K-U-M-A-R-A-S-A-M-Y. You got it. If people can spell my name, they can absolutely add me on LinkedIn. I'd be more than happy to reply. Yeah, to any, that's any what dance. I figure. You know, if you can <laughs> spell it, I don't have to be able to say it, but I can. <laughs> but I did say it at the beginning. <laughs> but I think it's important that they check in with you, and I want to make sure that they do. So, you know, we've given them a place to go. They can go and also have a free uh, communications class on Zoom every two weeks, and the more they go, the better they will be. And I thank you for being here today, Brendan. Thank you very much. Pleasure was absolutely mine, Joanne. Really appreciate you. Okay, thank you. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sanity Project Podcast. Please go to AskJoanneVictoria.com to listen to more podcasts, check out Joanne's coaching programs, and get a free copy of her report, Five Steps to Achieve Life-Work Harmony. That's AskJoanneVictoria.com. Take care and thanks for being here.